down, guys. I gotta ask Duke about it first. What's going on out there? Reporters. They heard about Tom Green's speech and your gift to him. Damn it, I never meant for that to get public. I'm gonna put a stop to this. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's great publicity for your campaign. I didn't do that to get votes. Already there's a whiplash. People at the 4th of July party were already assumed that I was helping Tom Green as some vote-getting gimmick. People? Or just Anna Devane? You watch it, old boy. Duke, you don't mix business with pleasure. No, I never do. And that's why I don't want to talk to reporters about what I do personally. Okay, I help Tom Green out of kindness. If you're embarrassed about that, then you should be embarrassed about all the money you hand out. That is my business. You sure as hell have open pockets when it comes to the poor, Duke. Don't you talk to me about the poor. I knew poverty when I was a kid. And sometimes whenever I think about it, I get the taste in my mouth. Did you know that poverty has a taste? It tastes like copper. And it makes people's eyes go dull. So don't you talk to me about poverty. Because, God, I hate it. Look, I'm with you, Duke. But I'm here to remind you of something. The chief wants you to be president of that union, and he wants it real bad. I'm not running for president just for the chief. I'm running because I think maybe some good can come of it. So you get out there, and you tell these reporters to go away. It's so noon, 60 seconds. Let's go find it off. Oh, Sean, Alex. Hey, I, it looks like the two presidential candidates are going at it toe-to-toe, -to -toe, huh? Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and the winner is Duke Lavery! I didn't think you had an in, pal. Neither did I. Oh, good show, Jimmy. Good show. Well, Mr. Vane. Are you taking on a second job? No, oh, this is uh, just for the morning. <laughs> Congratulations. You win again. Do you ever lose? Oh, not at things I, I care about now. It's your excuse me? Yeah. Well, I'll let you get back to your campaign now. I think I, uh, I think I got a few more votes this morning. I think you did, too. Um, listen, I, I, I wanted to apologize for last night. An apology from the chief police herself? Well, Anna Devane is about to apologize. No, I was wrong. I'll only accept her apology over lunch. Oh, dear. Do you think you're best for it? <laughs> I can shout and change. What do you say? All right. Okay. Um, Sean. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Have fun. Okay. I hated to take this Carter off, you know. I've kept this on day and night since the wedding. Downstairs, you know, I just have them send something up. Please. Thank you. My pleasure. So, what are we having? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Steak and potatoes. Oh. It's, uh, that's a real working man's lunch. You don't mind, do you? I'm sorry if I upset you and I. I called Robin Love last night. Yeah, I'm truly sorry that I snapped at you. Really. I guess I hit a nerve. Or... Mm. Someone I care about used to use that expression a lot. Robin's father, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to replace him, Anna. I know that. I was just being, I don't know, I was just being foolish and oversensitive. I would never presume to replace anyone in, in Robin's life or, or in yours, for that matter. I 
I don't want to be a substitute father. And I certainly don't want to be a substitute lover. I mean, the, the only thing that I desire is just to be... is just to be wanted for myself. How about you, Anna? What is it you want? Um... I think we should eat this dinner before it gets cold. You don't want another ale? No, thank you. I'm fine. I just want to hear the rest of your story. Well, I... My mother, she took in laundry to help make ends meet. My father, well, he held on two jobs to try and keep food on the table, but it just wasn't very successful. Did you know it was a really special treat in those days? Oh, I don't know, ice cream. No, not ice cream. Crisps, potato crisps. <laughs> Whenever they could afford to buy the small bag, well, there were so many where they'd have to, they'd, they'd ration them out. And when I was a kid in school, it was raggedy clothes, and, and I couldn't wait for lunchtime so that, so that I, I could eat my, my, my three crisps. There's nothing funny about poverty, is there? No. No, there isn't. Now, I see why you're determined to help Tom Green. Well, I mean, I know what it's like on the dogs. I've come a long way from being a, a poor kid, you know, rationing potato crisps. You've dedicated yourself to sharing your wealth, I suppose. Yeah, but I'm not trying to give money away the way you and, and other people think. I mean, it's not like that. Uh -huh. I know how hard it is on the dogs, that's all. Come in. Oh, sorry I interrupted you, Duke. What's the matter? Well, I thought Chief Devane would like to know uh, what happened on the docks. What? Well, at uh, rookie Frisco Jones, he uh, got into a little problem. Is he all right? Oh, he's a little embarrassed, but he's fine. What did he do? Well, he destroyed half the dock. He, uh, he dumped down Lee's cargo and uh, Billy's cart right into the water. You're joking. I think the kid got a little over-anxious walking his beat. I'd better get over there straight away. I hate to eat and run, but this sounds disastrous. That's the word for it. Thanks for the, for the company. I enjoyed it. Hope you straighten out the trouble on the docks. Yes, starting with Frisco Jones. 